All right, so Miss Jerry in the building. Wow. All right, so Miss Jerry, listen, I um, I figured that you would be the best person to come to to help this uh, driver that was in my uh, comment session of of a recent video, and um. And in this con in, in his comment, he reached out to me and he asked me, he says that he went to uh to take a drug test and everything. And unfortunately, he had to leave because of uh, you know, because of obligations. I guess he got another, you know, he got another, you know, position or whatever the case. But unfortunately, by leaving, it was it was put on his FMCSA clearinghouse that he refused the drug test. He wants to know uh, what what are the options, if any, do we need to do do we need to get that off of his off of his record? And he also want to know like, do we just need to? Is there a phone number that he can call to just tell them that, you know, he didn't, uh, you know, he had other obligations? What what would you suggest that he do? Yeah, yeah, I was just doing some uh, clarification. Okay, go to uh, make sure. Okay, go ahead, start. Okay, so um, I I just want to clarify to make sure that I understand his situation. So he was at the testing facility and for whatever reason he had to leave and did not take his drug test and the drug testing lab has since given him a refusal uh, violation in the FMCSA drug and alcohol clearinghouse. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Is that correct? Okay. Okay. So basically, um, uh, it, it's, I'm not going to give you the nice version. Okay. I'm going to give you the real version. No, give me All the right? real version. That's uh, what we, that's, that's what we do over here on the lockout man podcast show. We don't sugarcoat nothing. Good, good, good. Cause, um, I, I don't sugarcoat anything over in life on the road. You too, either. So this, this gentleman, unfortunately, uh, will have a violation in the clearing house. And he will have to go through the return to duty process. There is no lawyer that he can call. There is no one that's going to take his case and say, let's go fight the de Department of Transportation. That is a violation. There's a, approximately a dozen refusal instances in which a driver can get a refusal. And that's just one of them. His situation is just one. And there's so many drivers out there like him that don't know and good driving, good qualified professional drivers that don't know and end up leaving or, you know, whatever the case may be and get this violation. Now that clearing house is going to follow him for five years. Um, however, and this is what I tell all drivers that's in this situation, it's going to be on your clearing house for a period of five years or however long it takes you to complete that process. But the question on the application that these companies ask is have you ever failed a drug screen or have you ever had a refusal? Have you ever had a violation in the clearinghouse? And so the ever is the key word. And so that stays in and follows you forever. The, mm -hmm. the, the, the disappointing thing of all of it is he didn't even have, she, you know, whoever, whatever it, the person was, didn't have, a, a, it wasn't a test failure. And so it was a refusal. But even as a refusal, you get labeled and you get that X on your back like everybody else. And you get, you get dropped in that bucket you, of crackheads. You get you get blacklisted. Now, let me ask you this. And, and you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. A lot of drivers, a lot of a lot of potential drivers that comes in, especially from the school that comes in for, you know, that new position, they don't know. Because, see, I thought, like, mm. me and you conversated before, and I thought that, hey, you know, I'm sitting there, I'm waiting for it to get tested, 
All of a sudden, Snyder calls me up, who I've been wanting to go with for the longest. And I say, hey, you know, I, I get up and tell them, hey, thank you, but no thank you. I'm about to go. And, and, and boom, I get that on, I get that on my clearinghouse. Like, I didn't, yeah. you know, I, I, I got another opportunity with Snyder. And now that Snyder called me, I left, I go to Snyder. And then now Snyder sees that. That messes up my opportunity mm -hmm. with Snyder, right? Absolutely. 110%. Um, and so we do a lot of educating at conferences and truck driving schools and stuff like that, especially to the new drivers. I just spoke to a, a group of workforce, uh, workforce Center individuals out of California yesterday that were trying to enter the industry. And that's one of the things that I tell them that, uh, when you get to that orientation, because day one is drug testing. Day one is drug testing, oh, filling out paperwork, yep. videos, all of those things. And so if you walk out of day one because, you know, somebody else called you, that's great. You got another opportunity, but I recommend you finish in day one. Finish day one, because if you walk out of day one without doing that test, or if you if you hear you didn't know when you got in there that they were getting ready to do a hair drug test, and now all of a sudden you hear they're doing a hair, oh, man, I can't pass the hair, I can pass the urine, and then you leave out, that's a refusal. Um, either way, you know what I'm saying? And so it, it's important that you sit there and you finish everything up. But even, it, It's just... Oh, that's... Oh, it, even if they know that they can't pass the hair follicle test, they still blacklisted because because they're there. Oh my God! Well, yeah, it's it's is. Let me let me let me clarify. Let okay. Me clarify. Okay. Okay. So most of these mega companies do urine and hair. Okay, they do both. The majority of them, yeah, they have to do coming. urine because it's because coming. Says it. It, oh yeah, it's coming. It's so coming. most it's, of them are doing it. it it's coming. Exactly. That, that hair it's, follicle. It's er, everybody keeps. Yep. Everybody keeps saying, "Well, where's all these companies that where I could go that don't do hair follicles?" At, in a minute, it's going to be. It's it's going to be feder. It's going to be federated. In a minute. Yeah. It's going to be federated yep. in already, a minute. They talk about swabs now. They talking mouth swabs are coming as well. So, and, and not mouth swabs, well, more mouth swabs we already do for alcohol, but mouth swabs for marijuana and drugs and stuff like that. So that's coming. It's all coming hard and fast. It, it is. Mm, mm. All right. So, Miss yeah. Miss Jerry, okay. So, what what would be the proper procedure for anybody that that gets an opportunity? while they're at one opportunity, what is the proper procedure for them to like, you know, like not go through the, through the, through the uh, drug, I mean, through the drug process without getting a refusal? Don't go in the building. Even if you caught the bus, the orientation, mm. they put you in a hotel. Mm. Um, if you don't show up that morning, that's not a refusal. But if you show up that morning and you go in there, that's a refusal. And you leave out, say, I got to leave because, you know, such and such company down the street just called me. One, you're going to piss them off. And two, you're going to end up getting a refusal. Mm. So it's not like if they if they sign in or anything, it's like when they actually get there. Because if you don't sign in, they don't well, know who you are, right? Exactly. We're talking two different things. So we're talk I'm talking orientation. Okay. Like at the you know, a lot of these companies do orientation. You go to the orientation facility and things like that. Okay. That's a refusal. Okay. If you're there, you get checked in sort of stuff. But, but if at you, the drug test at the drug test, yes. Right. If you just at the quest or the concentra or whatever. Um, and you go in and you sign in and then um, take possession of the cup and decide you want to do something different, then that's a refusal. That's a refusal. And there's a couple of other ways that you can get a refusal up in there. I've had young ladies argue with the um, with the uh, testing 
personnel mm -hmm. and have a you know a combative argument. And that's a that's a failure to cooperate. What? That's a failure to cooperate. Yeah, there's a lot of ways you can get a refusal. There's a lot of ways, and and good drivers are getting one every day, every day. Man, listen, shout out to Bit Jerry here from Life on the Road Recruiting. Tell the people how they can get in contact with you. So I'm Miss Jerry with Life on the Road Recruiting. We have a uh, YouTube channel where we spend all our time educating our drivers in the industry. Life on the Road Recruiting is our YouTube and our website, www.lotrrecruiting.com. Is, is how you can reach us, or you can call the team at 832-572-5277. And you guys know the best conversation starts over here on the Lockout Men podcast show. And thanks to Big Jerry, Miss Jerry from Life on the Road Recruiting to help me out to answer this question for you, guy. I, I, I hope um, I, I know this wasn't the answer you was looking for, but, I mean, you know, now, now, you know, now, now, you know, it's, it's, it's an unfortunate situation that that's going to be on you for a while, but, but yeah, but Hey, Jerry, let me ask you this. I mean, even if he just, you know, walked out as a walkout refusal, could he, you know, when you fill out the application for other companies and they ask him, you know, on the application, whether or not you refused or failed a drug test, can you just put down that? you refuse the drug test and give a reason and then would that be kind of like up to the company or you know up to the company to you know give them a chance or whatever yeah so more and more companies are starting to look at these situations and ask more questions um a lot of companies, because these drivers are put in a bucket, whether they refused or failed or whatever the case may be, most companies kind of just kind of tend to shy away from even working with them at all, period. But um, he has the opportunity to put that on there. But most companies, it's like, because I don't understand it or I don't know what to do or how to hire compliantly, then I'm not going to even deal with it at all. And so that's what we find. And so we spend a lot of time teaching trucking companies how to hire and what to what to do so that they won't pass up on a good driver. Like this guy sounds like he could be a good driver. You know what I'm saying? Right, and so right. you just have to know how to compliantly do it the right way. Um, but it is, it is um, unfortunate that so many companies are just kind of turning a blind eye to these guys. There's 140,000 of them out there. Mm -hmm. And so we're trying to touch every last one of them. We do have a database. So let him know. We have a database that um, trucking companies are getting into. We're teaching them how to do it. And then they're reaching out to the drivers that are in our database that are in this unfortunate situation. Very good, ma'am. Very good. All right, guys. Until next time, stay tuned for the next Lockout Men podcast show. There's something in the air. Tonight, got a feeling coming over me I swear that this is that place to be in the water yeah.